in my veins I've been driving this train Years in this lane There's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game And I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes Made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks Feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight Never stop, never changed All the squad here to play And I've got something to say, yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no I push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make Hey guys, I'm Mark and this video has been a little while in the making so thanks to all your comments and feedback over the last few years and um, yeah it's been great so but one question that's been coming through quite a while and particularly of late is I'd love you to do a mod video take us through your car and tell us what you've done so here it is so probably the most common question I get is what wheels and tires are you running so I'm running 17 inch monster weapon rims they're an alloy rim uh, purchased from uh, Bob Jane uh, T-Mart a couple of years ago now most of you that own a Pajero Sport would know that they come with 18 inch tires as uh, rims are standard so I wanted to go as small as I could to increase the sidewall for off-road driving etc so I was able to get um, these 17 inch uh, rims to fit so monster weapon um, from Bob Jane um, and they just fit the calipers um, which is great there's not a lot that actually fit the Pajero Sport um, aftermarket 17 inch uh, rims um, and it's just due to the size of the brake calipers so these ones actually fit and we did some testing before making the decision to buy them um, but so far they've been great and the reason I went with alloy was pretty much due to weight and wrapped around those I have the Falcon Wild Peak AT3 tires um, heard a lot of really good things about these um, a few years ago before making the decision to, to purchase and I've just been super impressed um, I've taken them in mud, sand, you know, slippy terrain, you know, corrugations, you name it, and they've been awesome. So at this stage, that'll be the tire I will get again in the future. Um, I'm running wider tires though, so I wanted to get as big as I could, um, obviously without scrubbing, etc. So uh, these are just under a 33 inch tire. So they're a 275 70 17. Um, obviously with 17 being the size of the rim. So, uh, and yeah, no scrubbing. Um, uh, yeah, really really happy with the performance and when they're aired down off-road, they're just awesome So in terms of suspension, I'm running a two inch Ironman lift um, There's heavy-duty springs front and rear and also foam cell shocks. So a uh, bit of a learning for me, but I actually had to change over the springs um, Before we got the caravan. So I actually went with performance springs uh, initially um, but actually had to change them over to heavy-duty springs um, and that was due to um, the GVM upgrade um, project that I did and there's a previous video on that if anyone is interested um, but yeah been pretty happy with the suspension um, it's been on a range of terrain and seems to be um, handling it just fine so so that's been good and all the information on the type of springs uh, etc will be in the description if you would like further information as well so in terms of recovery I have a Runva nine and a half thousand pound winch so it's the EWX 9500 model um, used it a couple of times and it's been awesome um, you would have seen in my recent video I did have some issues with the winch but I uh, believe that was actually battery related so the winch itself has held up um, and it's uh, back to life which is great uh, outside of that um, I keep a fair bit of recovery gear uh, in the boot of my car so here I've got an XTM recovery bag which has my uh, recovery straps um, shackles etc in there Behind there I have a toolbox and I also have an ARB compressor as well. So normally I have a fridge sitting just to the uh, right hand side of my drawer here. At the moment it's got my some recovery gear, I'm just off road at the moment. Um, but yeah, normally my, my fridge um, sits there and I have my um, Dometic battery which I'll run through in a minute as well. Got two recovery boards here, I've sort of got a couple of no brand ones that I've had for a long time. And then I also have two of the smaller Max Tracks. Um, they're actually the Jack Base one. So if you just look at the bottom of that, you'll actually see it's completely flat. Um, so that essentially has a dual purpose. So when um, we have the caravan, I can use, use them as levelers. But also if I need to jack up the car or anything, I've actually got a flat surface there to do it. So um, that's really good. Now prior to that, I just carried along a little piece of wood 
in my car. So if I ever needed to jack the car on soft sand, then I've got a, a hard surface to do that. So everyone needs a good toolkit. So in mine, I have a, a whole heap of miscellaneous tools I'll quickly show you as well. Yeah, so yeah, I always recommend you, as long as you can have the weight, um, make sure you've got your, your key tools. So, you know, spanners, ratchets, um, even a ruler, bits and pieces, you know, Stanley knife, scissors. Um, it's surprising the amount of times I've needed all sorts of different tools when I've been on my travels and a lot of the time it's helping other people as well. So behind this I have my ARB single pump uh, compressor. It's been great. Um, you can get some of the faster uh, pumps as well, um, sort of the, the no brands out there. And um, I did have an XTM one before and, and this is not... Um, bagging XTM but it didn't last very long. I've had this the last few years and used it a considerable amount of time and it's been great. Uh, it's been flawless for me so yeah I think spending a little bit of extra money on the compressor um, was definitely uh, a good call. Inside there I've got also other things so um, your bandages, um, band-aids, hydrolytes, gloves um, etc so um, yeah good to have a decent first kit in your vehicle if you're going to be off-road. So one of the first mods I actually made to the vehicle was adding a bull bar and I was quite adamant that I wanted one because you know I wanted to do regional remote driving and I wanted that extra little bit of protection. So um, adding a bull bar, there's lots of different sort of ways you can go. Um, there's some sort of composite um, lightweight ones now out in market, so it's the smart bar. Um, you've got obviously the steel bull bars which are probably still the most common that you find. And then once you decide uh, what you want to go with is you know you need to look at sort of what options there are in market so um, I decided to go the Ironman bar and there's also PIAC which um, do a good bar which is quite popular amongst uh, Pajero Sport owners but you know at the time you know, Ironman sort of stacked up for me price and a whole lot of other reasons as well but um, I knew I wanted rated recovery points I knew I was going to put a winch on eventually as well so um, I went with the commercial deluxe bull bar um, and I think it looks pretty mean as well. So that's um, obviously an important factor as well as how it sort of complements the style of the vehicle. So yeah, went with the Ironman bar. And then I guess once you add a bull bar, there's a whole heap of other considerations you need to make because uh, all of a sudden you've added a fair bit of weight to the front of your vehicle. So, you know, you've got to consider suspension and those sort of things. Um, so, and as you'll see in my, in, later in this video, um, we have done quite a bit of things on the suspension as well to compensate for that extra weight. Just under the vehicle here, you'll see the rated recovery points that have been also um, added to the uh, front of the bull bar. So the other thing which we've added, which every four wheel driver must consider if they're gonna take their vehicle off road is aftermarket bash plates. Uh, it's one of the most simple mods you can do. Uh, usually only takes about 30 minutes to add them on. And you know, it just gives you that peace of mind and protection if you do hit anything when you're off road that your kind of key components of your engine, etc., are protected. So uh, these are booze bash plates. Um, there's a heap of others available um, in market and uh, obviously check what works with your vehicle. But for the Pajero Sport, um, I've gone with booze. So in terms of vehicle protection, the other things I've done is adding uh, bedrock liners to the floors. So they just contain all the dirt and sand uh, when I'm off road and they're quite easy to clean. So saves the carpet. Um, you'll see behind that as well, I've got a little fire extinguisher as well. Uh, purchased the bracket from, and also the extinguisher from Cap Industries. So um, yeah, just a good piece of mind to have that. So over to the side as well, we see little factory Mitsubishi um, weather guards. So allow you to have the windows a little bit ajar when you're driving, um, when it's wet, for example. So they're good. And I think they just add to the style as well of the vehicle. So at the back of my boot, I have the Dometic uh, 40 amp hour lithium battery and um, that normally runs my um, Dometic CF50 fridge, so 50 litre fridge. And that's probably been one of the best purchases um, since I've owned this vehicle. Um, that little battery has come in so handy. Um, the fact that it's light and it's portable, I've been able to take it out for camping trips, um, substitute it even in our Jayco Dove that we used to have as well. So we could take that in and power up devices and all sorts of stuff. And even though it's 40 amp hour, because it's lithium, you know, you can draw 100% of that battery power. So you obviously notice that sits a bit higher than standard. So there is a custom drawer sitting under that, made by 
company called Black Label Storage Solutions in WA. Uh, they were really great to deal with. Um, and one thing I would say about this car is I've changed configurations that many times. So when I bought it, uh, obviously wanted a drawer system that could you know, contain all my gear and then have a fridge on top and then have an essentially an opening next to that that I could put my swag in. Uh, that's, that was great for probably a year and a half. But since then, circumstances have changed. Um, we've bought a caravan, etc., and weight's become a bit of an issue. So we've done lots of uh, moving things around. I've uh, removed the drop slide that I originally had on the drawer. Um, and yeah, that saved about 30 kilos. So um, that was a no-brainer. And I've retained the drawer as well because uh, that's just super handy for me to keep all my recovery gear and uh, all sorts of stuff in there, food, etc., when I go on my travels. To storage and carrying load, I've got some uh, aero roof racks that I purchased off eBay. They weren't, I don't think they were any particular brand, but they've been good. I actually haven't needed to use them that, that often. Uh, I think once or twice I've had a storage um, container on there um, getting from A to B, but the main benefit of these for me is being able to uh, mount my um, awning, which I obviously use for camping in the swag. So I'm just inside the vehicle here and over to communications. And obviously this is an important area if you're going off road and staying in contact with your convoy etc so i've gone with the 5 watt uh, gme radio and it's the tx3350 model and i have that linked with a 2.1 decibel aerial and the reason i went with the 2.1 is um, its ability to communicate over hilly terrain so um, that's definitely a kind of a need for me when we do sort of off-road tracks etc so um, and it's been really good um, I can also change that over to um, a, a larger aerial if I wish in the future so in terms of the engine bay one of the first things you're going to notice is the way it lifts so actually gas struts added to the engine so that doesn't come as standard you've got the um, standard little pole here that connects in so that's been a good little mod um, purchase those from off-road daily pretty simple install at home and that just makes accessing the engine bay that much easier in terms of what else is happening under here we've got the Provent 200 catch can that's installed here and other than that I've just upgraded um, intercooler hoses so just here you can see so these are purchased from four forefront industries um, you can buy them from off-road daily as well so there's a few companies that do sell them um, there's the other one here intercooler hoses is a bit of a weak point on the Pajero Sport but to be honest um, I believe it is on a lot of common um, turbo diesel engines so um, they generally go um, on a lot of cases before 100,000 so as a preventative measure you can get upgraded hoses and um, yeah definitely recommend having a look into that if you haven't already um, because the last thing you want to do is be stuck on a trip getting error codes um, and it's just a split in your hose so um, either carry some uh, preventative tape with you so that if that does happen you can fix it on the go but the, the simple solution is, is to upgrade those and uh, it's relatively cheap to do so um, I can pop a link to um, the ones that I purchased below but as I said there's a few other options as well so in terms of the catch can and the uh, intercooler hose upgrade I haven't really done a lot to the engine um, my focus here is really reliability so I don't want to be doing a lot of tunes or anything like that that could impact that um, you know, if I have to look at that in the future around towing, then I will. But um, at the moment, I'm just really looking for a reliable car that can take me where I need to go. I do have an iDrive unit. Um, personally, I'm a fan. It works for me and it gives me that extra sort of throttle control um, when I'm going off-road or even towing, for example. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that sort of pro or con and it, and it always creates a bit of debate on uh, forums, etc. But um, yeah, for me, it works um, and that's good. And the final engine mod is a TJM snorkel. I do have a Red Arc Tow Pro Elite unit on the vehicle as well, and that allows me to control how much brake um, pressure is being applied when I'm towing a caravan, etc. The rear of the vehicle, we have a Heyman Reese tow bar. I went for that because I wanted the concealed version of the tow bar. So they, Mitsubishi do sell one as stock, but it does protrude out the back quite a bit. Um, some people like that because they, th they feel it gives them a bit of extra protection but for me you know I was really keen for that to be concealed so um, Heyman Reese do a nice little unit um, still gives you your full you know 3.1 ton tow capacity as well these are the King 7 inch LED spotties that I had fitted to the car um, around the time I got the bull bar and they've been great 
Um, the only thing I had to do was it came with a universal harness and I had to get that modified to suit the Pajero Sport. So um, that was a pretty cheap exercise via Auto Sparky. So um, yeah, just something to be in mind if you do buy these, but um, they've been awesome, uh, especially taking it on the Holland track where it was really dark and we were looking for that visibility and these just lit up the whole track. So um, even though they're seven inch, they do pack a punch. Um, so really happy with those. So some of you might be wondering kind of what's next um, in terms of modifications. I think I've probably reached the limit of mods and I'm pretty happy with where it's at. Anything else I'd probably do to the vehicle from here would be around sort of towing capability. So I'd be looking at things like, you know, transmission cooling um, or even, you know, bolstering the radiator and things like that to, a, you know, a, a, a higher core to allow for, for greater cooling. Um, so there are things sort of going on in the back of my mind at the moment. I'm not looking at a tune yet, but that could be something again to consider in the future. You know, if I'm finding it struggling on long distances when I'm towing. So yeah, it's all really around that sort of towing um, sort of options at the moment. But you know, at its heart, I wanted it as a tourer, and I've kind of kept it as a tourer. It's just now it's um, I'm asking it to do a few more things, and um, you know, I guess that is the pro with my setup. It, nothing's really fixed. Um, that rear drawer I can remove. So if I want my full boot, boot space back, I can do that. Um, in one of our, our latest videos, um, Tim actually came with me in the vehicle and we had two large swags in the back of the, the car. So it's super flexible in that regard. And the ability to sort of move weight around is really beneficial if you're towing. So you can, uh, obviously I can add a weight into the van if I want to get you know, it balanced a bit better, or I can add weight conversely into the vehicle here. So, so that's really good. In terms of fuel efficiency, it's still pretty good. I'm getting, I guess, on average around sort of 10 litres per 100 kilometres, which is good considering you know I've added bigger tyres to the vehicle. Um, that certainly does impact your fuel economy, but you know, no regrets there. They're just awesome. So that's really it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to know, please feel free to pop it in the comments below. Um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, um, please do so. And we're trying to hit a thousand subscribers at the moment. So, um, yeah, we'd love you to subscribe and follow us on our future trips. Um, that's about it. And uh, we'll chat to you guys soon. Bye. I won't stop till I hear him say. Oh, oh, la, 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 la.